This is Entertainment Roundup for February the 5th, 2013. Nice, cool Monday morning. I'm Jay77, and uh, first off, um, congratulations to the Baltimore Ravens. They have won the Super Bowl uh, in a very thrilling second half uh, uh, suspense finale. I say second half because I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I thought the first half was boring, underwhelming, disappointing. Um, I did not expect the Ravens to be up 28-6 to when all was said and done. Um, I thought it was going to be a very tight game, uh, but pretty much a low-scoring game where it would probably be either um, leading by field goal or pretty much tied 7-7. I did not really expect it to be that high-scoring a game. A lot of mistakes was made, of course, and uh, for the most part, the, the 49ers just seemed not into this game. Um, second half, didn't really follow much of Beyonce. She was fine. I didn't really care uh, for her performance. Uh, other than that, I, it just took me time to uh, wash up and change clothes and just uh, watch the rest of the game, just relaxing while going over some work. And then the blackout happened. And, uh, man, th was that kind of weird. Uh, I was like, wow, uh, this had to happen during the middle of a Super Bowl. Um, it was kind of bizarre. A lot of people didn't know what to do. I end up turning to my radio um, largely because I I feel that the radio can do a, a good, better play-by-play -play in terms of this, and they did. They did a great job. Um, and um, they, you heard Boomer Science and talking. You heard um, the announcers talking in a very. I don't know if they was using um, emergency um, signal um, generators to get their signal across or the phone wires, but you can tell the quality dropped significantly um, if you was listening to a radio, at least in my. Um, area. Um, it was very, very uh, wow. And the longer it went, the first thing I said to myself is, <clears throat> man, the conspiracy theories that will come out on um, the following day if Baltimore loses this game. Because a lot of stuff was happening, and I mentioned this in the video um, earlier, um, but I wanted to do, um, extend on this. There's a lot of people who bet on this game, a lot of people who gambled on this game. A lot of people had a lot of stakes on this game. You have Baltimore, who was in a momentum. He, they was um, they was in a rhythm. <coughs> who did not have the ball for, I believe they said, 88 minutes. That's a long time for a team to not have um, ball possession. Um, and once that second half started, it looks as though San Francisco was going to pull the greatest yet most bizarre comeback in history. Um, if they would have won that game, I guarantee you a lot of angry, angry uh, people would have voiced their, um, their disgust for what has happened, especially when um, the lights went out, which pretty much changed everything. I do mean change everything. Nobody was in this game. I don't care if you're the biggest fan. You cannot tell me that the first half, that, those crowds in that Superdome Arena was into this game. They were pretty much dead silent. And then after the blackout come, you see like a new fresh resurgence came with it. And we was probably treated to probably one of the, the best um, thrilling second half that I have seen in a while. At, at least with this game. Um, do I put it up there with any other ones? Not really. But at least for this one, it definitely makes up for the lackluster first half of uh, this game. A lot of people was angry at the first half because a lot of people wanted San Francisco to win. Um, a lot of people even stopped watching the game because they wanted San Francisco to win and they, they felt that the game is over. And the, um, and the, um, the, the sportscasters and the radio announcers have to basically said, it's not over yet, this doesn't really mean anything, anything goes in the Super Bowl, and man, was that true. However, there are still questions as to what the hell happened with those lights, which uh, so far... Um, different news have came um, on the wave. A lot of people um, have um, written about the lights, what the possibility, um, even sending some pictures of how it looks like uh, when the lights went out and the emergency lights went on. And there's even throwing stuff out there that suggests that this may hurt um, New Orleans' chances for another Super Bowl um, down the road. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I, I think that uh, th that is one of the few places that the NFL loves to go to, um, climate-wise, tradition-wise. Um, it is just one of those areas that every now and then they will definitely pick. 
and rightfully so. It's a good place to hold a uh, Super Bowl in. However, um, they need to find out what happened to those lights. And I throw a lot of stuff out there. I talked to a friend of mine about this, and I and uh, I pretty much uh, uh, said uh, that it's possibility that the lights, the new lights they put in for the Super Bowl, because even the caskers, have, even the sports announcers have said this that uh, the sports lights. Um, the new lights they had, like to give it a retro look, uh, may have played a factor more so than, it, than anything else. Um, not the concert that Beyonce had. Uh, maybe you know a lot of people trying to point in that that was the main factor. It's probably one of them in terms of power, uh, but just uh, rearranging um, lighting um, for that more Super Bowl effect may have caused uh, more of a drain uh, that uh, that stadium. Um, can handle. Um, keep in mind the Super Bowl, the Superdome is old. It's not like a new state. That's a brand new stadium. It's an old stadium. It's still a well-equipped stadium. It still has life left in it. But you gotta tell, you gotta ask yourself with um, the electrical work that's already in place, um, along with the added stuff they probably put in there, plus the fact that uh, the stadium was um, had to be refixed um, due to uh, Katrina. You gotta wonder if the the electrical work is a bit outdated. And that putting all these new, uh, up, upgrading it um, digitally with these new scoreboards and, and these new lights to fit the Super Bowl may have played more of a part than just um, some fool probably turning off the switch. I'm not saying they turn off the switch. I, don't, I think that, that it, that's going to happen. But it is something that uh, the NFL is definitely going to look into because they don't want that to happen again. They really do not want that to happen again. So hopefully they can get to the bottom of this, uh, fix it. Uh, make the improvements that is needed to prevent some future stuff from happening again. Um, keep in mind that the people who mate, who run maintenance on that um, arena is not happy at all. Um, they are embarrassed by this. Uh, and uh, the NFL also embarrassed by it because this is something they did not want. I do know that the coaches were screaming their lungs off uh, because of this. And rightfully so. Their momentum got completely broken. Uh, and I said again, half the Ravens lost this game. Um, we've seen a lot of coverage on the blackout now, but it would have been 10 times, 20 times, 30 times worse. Because you better believe they're going to say, half the lights played a factor, the lights was the reason why the Ravens lost. Um, it was a setup, they did that on purpose to break the concentration of the Ravens. You name it, it's going to be out there, and uh, it's, it's going to lead the NFL to even more um, dire situations where... Um, finger pointing maybe maybe um, coming coming their way, and that's something that, uh, especially with money involved, uh, could get ugly really fast. Ravens managed to hold on at the last minute, um, and they managed to pull out um, that victory that they so needed, uh -huh. and uh, kept that lead which they had all throughout the game. Uh, it was definitely a thrilling game, and uh, at least the second half, first half can care less. So with that being said, um, congratulations again with the Ravens and also to San Francisco 49ers. They played well. They deserve to be there. And hopefully um, next year um, they can finally bring home the trophy. Who knows? All right, let's go on to some other news. Let's stay with football a little bit because as you guys also know, um, this week um, the announcements for the Hall of Fame has been, um, been announced, the class of 2013. Um, no surprise that Pill Paul Sells had made it, even though I kind of wonder if um, he should have been in last year, even the year before that. I don't know the um, exactly the waiting period that you have to have um, before being eligible for the Hall. I believe it's five years, uh, pretty much standard rule. But in any case, he made it, um, and um, nobody's arguing about it. He deserved to be in there. Um, in the record, uh, it says here that he has uh, coach. Uh, the Giants from 1983 to 1990. You've also coached New England from 19... Um, I'm sorry, let me repeat that again. You have coached the Giants from 1983 to 1990. New England Patriots from 1993 to 1996. The New York Jets from 1997 to 1999. And last but not least, uh, Dallas Cowboys from 2003 to 2006. Um, he has spent a total of 19 seasons, 303 games, his regular rec regular season record is 172 wins, 130 losses, one pre one season tie. He has an impressive um, post game record with 11 wins, eight losses. He's also have an overall record that's all combined of 183, 138, and one. 
Parcells' only truly dismal season came at the first year of the New York Giants, um, a year that many people thought they was thought that would have been uh, one and done. Um, a lot of people, including family members of my own, was shocked that he actually survived that season. His record was three wins, 12 losses, one tie. Um, but apparently something uh, will come up um, from that. And since then, he have uh, taken the team to uh, two uh, wild card playoffs. Um, in 1986, he led them to a 14-2 record and defeated the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl. Um, he led the Giants to an, to an, N to an NFC cha division title in 1989. Uh, in 1990, he won his second world championship um, in a very crazy Buffalo Bills game. Um, so he had a very good record. Same thing with the Patriots. And uh, no doubt that he has um, also known for turning a lot of franchises around. Giants was in the dumps before he came there. England the same way. The Jets the same way. Uh, so he has a very good reputation of turning a lot of teams around. Um, so, you know, there are some decisions he made that was questionable. No question about it, especially with the Jets. But for the most part, um, he earned his stripes. He earned his uh, rightful place at the Hall. And I'm glad he's finally in there. Um, that's not to say he's the only one. There's other members, of course, I have to mention. Um, Larry Allen made the Hall of Fame. Uh, also making it is Chris Carter. Um, Curly um, Klump. We have um, Jonathan Oden. We also have Dave Robinson and Warren Sapp all making the Hall. So congratulations to all of you guys. <coughs> you guys have earned it. You guys have um, achieved it. And I'll be looking forward to seeing all of you um, take your rightful place uh, when come, induct come doing the induction. And uh, with that being said, let's move on. Um, I might well stick with sports a little bit longer because I have this one article I want to talk about. I'll leave links, by the way, to all the, um, all the um, articles that I'm talking about here. But I want to talk about this one because this one, uh, man, oh man, oh man. Um, I, I want to go on and say I don't have this much venom for Alex Rodriguez. Um, Alex Rodriguez, for the most part, have uh, done well here in New York. Um, I think more people are upset uh, by his gameplay doing um, the off, doing the post games games than they are in regular season games, um, and that's because he seems to go ice cold. Um. This article that I have read, uh, which starts out as saying here, Alex Rodriguez, the admitted store user and previously exposed liar, has the has the know how no has the know how this goes. He lives he lived it before. Years of denial once landed him in a stiffy tent outside a pretty little ballpark in Tampa, Florida, where he reluctantly gave away his name and reputation. Um, they're referring to, of course, the situation where he actually did a press conference and admitted of uh, uh, his steroid use, uh, which uh, a lot of people are still holding on his head today. Um, this also goes on to explain the situation where now he's being accused of steroids again, only this time by a clinic that was recently busted, from what I understand. Um, this person, this doctor, claims they have medical records saying that he stating that he did take these steroids. And uh, immediately afterwards, I was like, Rodriguez lawyered up and basically had his lawyers do all the talking, saying it's not true. Um, we never even met this person. We never went there before. Um, and uh, basically trying to do as much damage control as possible. Now, I'm going to say this. I don't know if he did it or not or he didn't. I'm not going to sit there and say he did. I'm not going to sit there and say he didn't. Um, a lot of people think he did, and even if he, um, he, he didn't do it, a lot of people aren't going to believe him anyway. Um, the situation goes far beyond that. This is a guy who has been suffering from injuries. He has an injury right now with his hip that may keep him sidelined for the whole entire year, which is something that even Yankees uh, staff do not want to hear right now. They do not want to hear this. They do not want, uh, they did not expect this, but this is something that has been going on. And um, now with this, is not uh, pretty much uh, making things any even better. Um, it's making things a lot worse. Um, to the point where newspapers are, are 
doing articles saying that the Yankees should go after his contract, that he breached his contract, um, and that they should um, just cut ties with him once and for all. That is easier said than done. One, they have to prove that he actually did induce steroids, that he actually did breach his contract. Um, and two, um, he does have a no trade clause, and that is guaranteed money he has. Um, so unless, again, it goes back to one, if, unless they have something that actually proved that he did in fact break con his contract, which is, which even if he did take steroids, that's not enough. Um, unless the ball, unless the organization says, yeah, you could go after it, got contract, you could uh, break the contract. I don't even think that's going to be enough. It has to be something more extreme than that. Um, with that being said, um, <clears throat> a lot of people say, should Alex well, Rodriguez say something? Honestly, I think the best thing he can do right now is um, get himself better, get himself rehabilitated, and let his lawyers do the talking. You don't, <coughs> excuse me, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're going to criminate yourself. Even if you didn't do it, you can still criminate yourself in ways that make you look like you did it. So his best bet right now is just let his lawyers do the talking, let his attorneys iron out all the facts. And um, just concentrate on just him getting better and trying to get stuff back um, to to the level that is um, is playable. Um, I think I think that's the only thing he can do um, at this time. He can't control what the media is writing right now. The media is going to run away with it. They smell a story. They smell venom, and they're going to run and they're going to report it as uh, as much as possible because it makes it makes for good news for them. I will say this about it though. Uh, I was not happy seeing this on my front page. I was not happy hearing my friend Sessa of WFN talk about it. It's not because he, um, that, that um, he was doing a bad job about it. He, he is obligated. He is a reporter. He is a new. He is a sports analyst, of course, to talk about this stuff. But the fact is, here we are getting ready for Super Bowl, and this is the stuff that's covering um, our newspapers. Um, this is taken away from the festivities, um, the interviews, uh, the preparation. This kind of stuff I didn't know I didn't need, and that's that's the that's the main thing I was very very bothered by, more so than anything else. So, yeah, that was the only thing. But other than that, um, yeah, um, hopefully things can get straightened out, um, and uh, we can finally find out what the real true story is. If she fabricated any papers, and or did in fact Dan uh, Daniel Craig. did in fact um, that's the next story by the way. If, in fact, Alice Rodriguez did take it. And if it's so, he needs to explain himself big time. All right, now let's get to the other story that I recently clicked on to. Daniel Craig. And why he's in, uh, made my radar is because Daniel Craig, who, uh, who is having a pretty good success with Skyfall, um, and was supposed to be preparing for the sequel to The Girls with a Dragon Tattoo, titled Girl Who Played With Fire, may not be um, back in this series. According to the article, they may um, actually write that character off completely and just focus on the main character, which is uh, played by, I believe, Rudy Moore, I believe. If I say her name wrong, I do apologize. But um, this move pretty much is not about uh, the character being killed off. It's pretty much more dealing with finance. Um, this movie was not uh, that successful in the box office. And Sony is not going to fork over an extra um, extra few million bucks to Daniel Craig, which, by the way, did ask for a raise um, to play this character. Um, and that's where the factor leads in. They're not going to bust the budget, um, especially when they already had a sense that this movie may not be the blockbuster that they were hoping for. Um, now, m mind you, they took their losses um, in the U.S. They did. Um, it still made its money. Um, it made 200 plus million dollars, but it was nothing like they had projected. And they said, all right, fine, this is just the introduction. The next two movies, we should see um, how that works out. Now, why Daniel Craig is asking for extra money to play, this, to play his character, uh, that he made famous? Well, the answer is very simple. Um, James Bond, Skyfall. It was a it was a juggernaut film, the first film that broke the billion dollar mark in the whole entire franchise. Um, many people were giving so much praises to Daniel Craig, um, deservingly so. 
and uh, pretty much he feels that he is a hot um, he is a hot asset to have right now and he wants to be paid as such that's fine but uh, also I can't knock Sony because Sony's saying well yeah that's true but we have a movie that may not make the money back if we paid you that we'd be taking a big risk and so it looks like at least for now that uh, Sony is about to uh, about to tighten this purse and not um, pay Daniel Craig and just basically do two things write him off completely or just basically have a different actor play him. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to write him off completely because of the simple fact is he's right now very recognizable and I don't think the crowd will be, the fans will be too pleased to see a different actor right now <coughs> play that role. Now that doesn't mean that, um, that in the end uh, they uh, would um, actually come to agreement and who knows uh, we see Danny Craig back, to get back together again doing the sequels and the third one but it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a big if um, according to the paragraph it says the level of rewrites mandated by cutting one or two lead characters could potentially cost even more than increasing Daniel Craig's um, salary, which is true. It says Daniel Craig representatives have denied the reports that he is seeking a salary increase, of course, saying that the negotiations are yet to be gone. It could be that the entire uh, notion of cutting him is a prospective negotiation tactic by the studio, which could also be true. It could also be very, very true. Uh, keep in mind, the studios is trying to save money. The studio is not trying to spend as much money. And if they can get, reach a bargain that's to their satisfaction, um, they're gonna do. They're gonna do that. Is it bad tactics? Of course it is. Come on, it must be realistic here. Um, now, as he say, he sh um, she said, um, but I do believe that Sony is not gonna make that move to go above what Daniel Craig is gonna probably ask for. And uh, if that's the case, uh, it could. Either make or break that from that franchise, which they're trying so hard to get the last two um, book adaptation up on the ground, or they can just go for a different, more cheaper actor and just met him or her or both. There's no guarantee that the uh, actress will come back to carry this film onto the last two projects, but who knows? Um, like to hear your guys comment on, it, especially those who are fans of the book and of the movie. What do you feel about um, this um, latest story that Daniel Craig may not be part of the um, latest installment of the Girls of the Dragon Tattoo? Let's keep it moving, guys. Let's keep it moving. Um, gonna go to Netflix. Netflix have made the news recently. Um, it's been a while since we have talked about Netflix. Um, in all fairness, this year, Netflix, well, at least past year, had, um, actually had a um, good year. They had a very, very, very good year. Um, despite their goof up with um, their streaming and uh, video mailing um, um, product they had, um, they had actually had um, some good turnouts. Um, but that's not why they made the news. Uh, according to this article, Netflix CEO fights for the rights to post company milestone on Facebook. Now, why is this a big deal? Uh, it's because a the, a the ACC believes that they are doing something that could give a disadvantage to their competitors or their allies. Um, it's a very, very complicated thing, but it says that the, um, the ACC believes that Haston Facebook post, which, um, which announced that Netflix users have watched more than 1 billion, ha 1 billion hours of contact over the company's streaming services, may have violated regulations requiring that such information must be disclosed. Though the press release on the wildly dis dismissive news was a weird um, service or by any other non um, exclusive methods that provides broad public access. Now why is this a big deal is because the FCC do have regulation and being the fact that I take accounting um, for, for uh, my college major, the FCC has strict guidelines in terms of what can be released to the public and what not to be released to the public. The reason why is this is that, um, I'll put an example, 
of Martha Stewart. Uh, Martha Stewart have um, have gotten information she shouldn't have gotten, and because of that, she have gotten a complete um, utter disadvantage. She gave she had the advantage what everybody else didn't, and that led her in trouble because that that um, that kind of information wasn't supposed to be announced until after the quarters um, until it was actually announced through the stocks. And that's why she got in trouble for it. She had served time for it, uh, which was a lot less than what other people would have um, served. But that's a different story. Um, the same thing they're trying to say with this. Although I do wonder, he just basically said that the Netflix users have watched more than 1 billion hours of content over the company's streaming service. He didn't exactly give a number how much he's making or how much he's losing. He just said how many customers have watched... Um, his streaming so I don't know what the real big deal is unless there's something else that the SEC is looking at that may uh, constitute them actually investigating them and uh, just for the record if the SEC start investigating you it's not pleasant I'm, I'm just keeping you real they're not very friendly when it comes to stuff like that um, in this um, also article they said that uh, that this also brings up a very, uh, very, very interesting situation regarding Facebook and other social media. Um, I'll read the last two paragraphs and I'll and then I'll let and then I'll let you guys decide once you guys um, link into it. I wasn't setting out for an example, hasn't told Bloomberg this week. I was sharing something for those two hundred thousand people who followed his Facebook feed. I'm not going to back down and say it inappropriate, inappropriately. I think it's perfectly fine. Sometimes you just have to have the example that triggers the debate. He does have a point. Um, Bloomberg notes that after the SEC sent the Wall Street notice to, to Hassan, there has been calls for the SEC to broaden its rule to allow social media such as Facebook and Twitter to be used uh, for to communicate to investors. Now this is where we get to a slippery slope here. Um, there are some information that should be disclosed um, for lots of reasons. One, you don't want your competitor to know about it. That was the main thing. And having it on Facebook and Twitter, even though you're, even though you may think it's private and only certain people are using, that's not always the best way to go when um, giving your, when posting your investments or posting your 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 income just posting your debt you don't want that to be shown because all it takes is one hacker to get that information and guess what you got problems other problems there's a lot of stuff that uh, should be kept um, contained uh, within the company um, you don't want too much information to be thrown out there um, a perfect example if you really want to find out what McDonald's is doing or Burger King doing you can you can go to the to the Better Business Bureau and they actually have a list. I had to do it for a college major about how much McDonald's had made, um, what was their what was their fourth quarter earnings, um, what's their um, who's how good was their profit shares, name it. It was so much stuff. I was surprised I actually got a B for that. I really did. I was I, I was stunned that I got a B for that because that's how much stuff it was there. It, we wouldn't you know why we had two months to do it, but. Um, it was a uh, it was financial accounting and we had to do it and man oh man was that a pain I was glad I was done um, for those of you guys who are in college now little word of advice start doing study groups it's much easier it's much more helpful and you can get connections um, tip over <laughs> uh, but um, in terms of this yeah um, I honestly don't think for now at least right now Facebook and Twitter is ready for this. There's still a lot of stuff that Facebook and Twitter um, that is good for in terms of business, but the sheer sensitive information on those two social sites, I don't think is ready for that yet. There's still a lot of stuff um, that needs to be ironed out, um, and to throw that there with the trust that only your top executives or top workers are going to see, you're you're putting you're you're taking a big risk. Um, maybe one day, it may it it, it could be a, a useful tool. But right now, I don't think they're ready for it yet. At least not yet. Let's move on to the next story here. 
I'm going to be very short on this story because uh, it's something that I think a lot of people will, can, will figure out um, as the season goes on. But I might as well say for those fans who are NCIS fans, um, they are, will be back for 11th and possibly 12th season. Uh, most of the cast has been re-signed, including um, one of the last ones that pretty much cemented the, um, that there will be another season, uh, Mark Harmon. He will be. He has signed a contract extension to stay on CSI. Um, to no surprise to anyone, CSI has been renewed. Has been be, uh, renewed. Uh, CBS has renewed the top rating TV series for the 11th season, and also has an option to pick up for a 12th season. Um, this has a very high rate, not only in the United States, but in other countries as well. Um, other countries, um, including France, Sweden. Um, you name it is uh, the UK. It is a very, very, it is a very, very strong, um, strong show with a strong cast, strong story, and fans from all across the country just love it. So I'm pretty much gonna keep it at that. Uh, but so, but congratulations to CSI. I actually liked uh, and CSI, NCIS. I actually liked that show as well. I like the golf chick. I really do. I think the golf chick is awesome. Um, She's the kind of girl I say that. That's the kind of girl I want. That's a that's a cool chick. She's bad uh, when it comes to her work, but she's also cool at the same time. She makes it look cool. Uh, you girl, you guys know what I'm talking about. Don't deny it. You know she's hot. <laughs> All right, let's head on out. Let's finish this off right here, guys. Uh, let's go right straight to Amanda Bynes. Um, again, this is a story that uh, that pretty much shocked me a little bit. Uh, again. I'm I'm very very disappointed with what I'm hearing from this. I'm very shocked, sad, and disappointed. But seeing that Amanda Bynes' problems continues to grow, um, there was an article out that said Amanda Bynes have left her apartment to avoid being evicted. Um, this comes after a major complaint um, on February f at, uh, on the, on a few days ago. Sorry, guys. Um, it says in the article, Amanda is going to have to find a new place to live in the Big Apple, but not, but for now she is calling on a downtown Manhattan hotel home. The troubled former teen star 26 moved out of her apartment on Friday, February the 1st, after building management threatened to evict her, according to TMZ. Following tenants have complained that um, the what I like about you star smoke marijuana and cigarettes morning, noon, and night in our apartment and even in the hallway. I was going to say how they figure, how they know she was smoking marijuana um, in the in the apartment, but apparently, if you smoke in the hallway, then it's obvious that you're also doing it there. Um, at least if the odor is seeping out of the um, apartment building. Um, although it was a non-smoking building, Bynes had refused to see smoking. In Bynes' wake was uh, was an apartment littered with marble light cigarette butts and dirty Q-tips. One insider told uh, U.S. Weekly. Um, the article also uh, have um, said that the parents are um, was meeting with her. They said that they are deeply concerned. They are worried for their daughter as well as they should. Um, but I don't know uh, what they're planning to do um, or what professional help they're looking to seek for her. Um, they have not really uh, gone into much details. Um, they did say that she still has been fighting a DWI case. Um, there has been other stories, which was actually proven that was not true, with her being nude inside some building and uh, pretty much being irate. Um, but in any case, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on with her, a lot of stuff that's going on in her mind. And it seems to stress back to uh, a few years ago when she suddenly quit and came back um, to show business and quit again. I'm pretty sure she's pretty much out completely now and not really looking back. But there's definitely something troubling her, and I think that it's, I think the parents... Um, really needs to have a long sit down with her because there's definitely something wrong um, and the fact that, that that she said there was nothing wrong to either further note that there's something wrong and she needs to address this um, hopefully um, she can get to help before it's too late uh, the last thing a lot of people especially our fans want uh, her is to follow the footsteps of Lindsay Lohan 
uh, in terms of her getting in trouble constantly. Not to say that's going to happen, uh, but uh, just ignoring the signs is not exactly helping her either. Uh, there's signs out there that she needs that she's um, there's something wrong, and I think that it's time for her family and her friends, her true friends, to start um, you know really saying, "Hey, you're messing up. You need to get your act together. Come on." Well, that's it for now, guys. Um, this is uh, all of the reports I have said um, today. I'll leave the links to the stories. Uh, I will also leave a link to a story regarding the blackout. You guys can read that. Love to hear your feedback on the matter. Love to hear your own opinion on the matter. But until then, this is J77 saying take care. Be safe. I will talk to you soon.